I'm Bob Baer. I'm the founder of the More Power to Publish conferences. I just finished a conference. We had a lot of great speakers, but there's one speaker, John Chow, the blogger, that I really wish I would have given more time. He was entertaining, he had great information, and I'm gonna see if I can get to one of his conferences myself. I just want to say, wow, I just got done seeing John Chow speak. He was talking about how to make $200,000 with an info product. I was very impressed with how John got right to the point of what he was talking about and gave us really clear, distinct information that we can use tomorrow. The most touching part, I thought, was your video. Your presentation was one of the ones that had the most content in the shortest period of time. I was totally floored with the kind of con uh, the information he can deliver and make it so personal at the same time. You want to learn about internet marketing? You want to learn about just the basic steps, the strategies that work when it comes to membership site building or click banking? You need to talk to John Chow because this guy is phenomenal. This person is one of the top 10 bloggers in the US, but not only that, there's so many people that blog, and blog, and blog, and it's kind of like the websites. You're not really all that interested in reading it. And so, people talk about blogging, well, how do you generate income from it? Well, John figured out how to do that, but that's actually not what he's gonna talk about today. He's gonna talk about shirt. taking any type of information product, including blogging, how to take content, turn it into a product that you can monetize. Zero to 200,000 in one month. I love your shirt. Sweet! And that was a launch. Now, I understand this is normally a three hour program that he's gonna present in like 30 minutes. So strap on, get ready. Are you ready? I want that shirt. Wow. You want to run welcome? John? I'm Eddie. Welcome to you. Hi. Hi. Which mic am I using? You, you, you can use one. All right, let's use this mic. Awesome. Okay, can anybody hear me good? All right, now a little something about me before I begin. Normally, uh, officially, I am the founder and CEO of TTZ Media Inc. That's my holding company that holds all my online assets. It's based in Vancouver, which is where I'm from. And, but online, most people know me as the, uh, the blogger who makes money online by telling people how much money he makes online. <laughs> yeah. You see, when it comes to making money online, I, I actually, I wrote the book on it. Literally, I did, I wrote the book on it, so you just make money online. <laughs> so, and I got a copy of something. That's my first book, and this, this is my newest book. It's called Blogging Secrets. It's, uh, it's available on Amazon and most bookstores, so yeah. But, Right. So who is John Chow? Well, a few more things. The AdLinks.ca maintains a list of the top 50 Canadian internet marketing blogs, and on that list, I am number one. Uh, so, uh, market research firm Impact Radius in New York uh, uh, this year released a list of the top 25 most influential person or people in affiliate marketing, and on that list, they ranked me number four. Right. At the uh, Ad Tech Trade Show in San Francisco, that happens every year, they host the Affiliate Marketing Awards. This is uh, basically like Affiliate Marketing's Oscar. And in 2012, I was the recipient of the Best Marketing Affiliate blog. All right. yeah. Also in the same year, at the Affiliate Summit in New York City, uh, they hand out what's known as an AFI Award. An AFI Award is given to companies and people who have made tremendous contribution to the affiliate marketing industry. And I was one of the six recipients of that award. It was uh, handed to me by Ice-T and his wife, Coco. All right. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ice-T called it a giant butt plug. <laughs> I am also the subject of a social media documentary that was filmed by CBC Television. Uh, CBC is basically the Canadian version of the BBC. And basically, uh, the, the documentary follows the life, the week in the life of a company, Hootsuite in this case, the Twitter client Hootsuite, uh, Emily Carr University, the school, and somebody who makes money online by blogging. <laughs> so uh, it was recently screened at this year's South by Southwest, and I was told that my daughter Sally stole the show, because <laughs> she's in it. <laughs> now, CB the CBC owns the rights to this show. I do have it available. If you do want to watch it, 
just that's the link to watch the show. It's on my Google, it's on my uh, YouTube channel. It's invisible otherwise because the CBC owns the rights. So, but you could watch it if you want to. Just go to jclink.me/gs for Generation Show Show, and you can watch the full show with no commercials. Uh, my blog, on average, does get about a quarter million active users and followers a day. Uh, I have 105,000 people following me on Twitter. Over 12,000 people have my friends on Facebook, and 100 some odd thousand on the email list. So uh, decent sized traffic. <laughs> uh, my blog, my blog is powered by WordPress, and WordPress has a they. Every year they process what's called an annual report on your blog, and it's, 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 a, it's presented as an infographics. So basically, according to WordPress.org, my blog is uh, read by 225 countries around the world. And they also ha made this little note, that I thought was quite interesting. Is about 55,000 tourists visit Liechtenstein every year. JohnChow.com was viewed over 9.5 million times in 2012. If we were Liechtenstein, it would take about 173 years for that many people to see it. The blog has more traffic than a small country in Europe. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> All right. uh, a few more facts about me. Uh, basically, uh, I worked at a job for a grand total of eight months of my entire life. My first job was at McDonald's. I lasted four hours before I quit. I have tremendous respect for people who can work at McDonald's. My second job, I was a phone solicitor for a copy cleaning company. I lasted about two weeks before they fired me. And my last job, I was selling car audio for A and B Sound in Vancouver, and they're no longer around, probably because of me. But <laughs> <laughs> I lasted about seven months before they came me from that job, and after that, I never worked again. I conclude that working sucks, and it's not that I'm unemployed; I'm just unemployable. <laughs> <laughs> I've been online since 1998. I've been a full-time internet marketer since 2000. I went up with the dot-com boom, went down with the dot-com crash. I'm currently writing the second wave, the social media wave. My blog was started in December 2005, and I am a self-confessed tech geek. <laughs> I have all the latest gadgets, everything. And in fact, I'm so much of a tech geek that uh, when my daughter was born, and actually when my wife was pregnant, and we found out it was going to be a girl. So and one of the things we did, you know, when I was selecting names for her, one of the first things I did was uh, I made sure my daughter's domain name was available before I named her. <laughs> SallyChild.com. Right. Her blog was started three months before she was born. The first blog post was a picture of an ultrasound, and the title says, I'll be live soon. She has her own Twitter account, and you can follow her at Sally Chow. And like every six-year-old, she has her own Apple iPad. And I can tell that you know, she's growing up in the iPad generation. A while back, I asked her to do something that she didn't want to do, and instead of getting mad at me, she, she, she did this. Yeah. You see, the kids today, they, they, don't, they don't give you the finger, they resize you. <laughs> People look at me now and they think things are great and things are always great, but you know, it wasn't always like that. I was born in a small farming village in mainland China. The house I grew up in had no windows, no lights, no electricity, no running water, no stove. Right? And instead of describing it to you, I have a video of my visit back to that house. I spent the first seven years of my life in this house, so I want to show it to you. It doesn't matter if this house faces north, south, east, or west because, well, there's frankly no windows. Doesn't matter about the views or anything like that, so. Hey, come on inside. Check out this lock. Okay. This is the original lock. And it still works. This house was built by my great great grandfather. It's been in our family for four generations. Uh, you know. Four generations. You know, if this house was in Canada, it probably wouldn't wouldn't be up anymore, but it's hard as a rock. That's because it is a rock. This is the, uh, the stove where we cook. The wok goes in here. 
you put the firewood in there, stop the fire, and you cook. This is the well. It's a, it's a lot smaller than I remember. Hmm. Then again, when I was uh, here, I was just a little kid, so I guess it looked a lot bigger. But yeah, this is our only source of water, and you know, rainwater basically. This is the main living room. Again, uh, no windows, uh, no light. It's kind of like this is my room. I believe I slept, I slept up there. I would climb up on this this ladder, which is not broken, but I, I would climb up there, and basically that's where my bed's up there. And I do have a little window and uh, candles for light. This is the walkway to the uh, main entrance. It's uh, just cobblestones. And, you know, I can't believe I used to walk this barefoot, but uh, <laughs> I did. This house has no electricity. And so the only source of light at nighttime are these candles. They're not very, very bright. I, I think they only have maybe like 15 watts equivalent to a light bulb. So. I'm also wondering where the smoke goes too. But. All right, so you've seen the house and you've seen all the rooms, but you're probably wondering, what's the washroom? Well, we don't have one. But when I was growing up, uh, you see the little corner, the little corner there? That used to be an outhouse. Uh, basically, you just, uh, you know, you just go in there, you, you do your business, and you just scoop it away. Basically, that's... Okay, so now you know where I came from, and hopefully after this, you'll understand why I truly appreciate what I do have. You know, like, uh, I... I don't take what I have for granted. I truly uh, give thanks every day to what I've been able to accomplish, to what my parents have done to, you know, to uh, get out of this country and you know, enter into North, into North America to give me a better chance of life. You know, uh, if an immigrant who's uh, English as a second language and uh, has terrible spelling and grammar, <laughs> if, if that person can uh, make a living out of writing, <laughs> then uh, really, uh, I don't think any one of you have any excuse whatsoever for to not succeed. My family immigrated to Vancouver when I, when I was seven years old. Uh, you know, Vancouver consistently ranked as one of the best cities in the world to live. Yeah. 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 Mercer lives number one, everything number one. And, and why not? Just look at it. I mean, it's a beautiful city. Yeah. But you know, that's not the Vancouver I grew up in. This is a Frank Red weapon. The downtown east side is the poorest neighborhood in all of Canada. It's, think of East LA, the Bronx, this is worse. Highest concentration of HIV infected people per capita in North America. Highest concentration of drug dealers or drugs, that kind of stuff. You know, it's not the, it's not the best place to grow up, but it's where I grew up. Looking at this, you know, a lot of people was telling me that, you know, your life must have sucked when you were growing up. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I never saw it that way. Mm -hmm. See, what I saw was I live in a place where a toilet that actually flushed. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Huh? See, when you look at your situation, you can present, you can, you present with either a choice. Yeah. yeah, it's either you look at it as a problem or you look at it as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. right? Growing up, I always saw nothing but opportunities, because that's what my dad taught me. And that's one of the reasons he worked to bring me to a new country, so I can have better opportunity. And he said that in this country, I could be anything I wanted to be. And of course, he wanted me to be a doctor. <laughs> you know, typical Asian family always want the kids to be doctors. <laughs> you know, the, the, these days, my dad has no concept of what I do. He just tells his friends that I sit in front of a computer and money comes in. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's a little something about me, and uh, you know, what I want to show you today is uh, how a case study on how I launched an inf information product and generated $200,000 in sales in the first month. All right, so I generally, while well, I like publishing books, I also, I generally, I prefer information products more. And the reason I didn't want to talk about books today was because there's enough expert here today to talk to you about books. I want to tell you another angle from it. Okay? So what is an information product? Basically, an information product is a virtual-based product like e-books, downloadable software, membership site, that kind of stuff. Okay? So it's not physical. The reason I like them 
is because they're very easy to create. Like, if you've been blogging for any length of time, chances are you already have enough blog posts to create an information product. Like my first, my first ebook was, uh, was basically I just took all my previous blog posts compiled, uh, that's related to blogging, compiled it into a nice logical order, and then sold it. Now, you could say that, you know, I can go to your blog and get the information for free. I go, no, you can. You just have to go for 6,000 blog posts. Right? Or you could pay me $37 and I will present it right to you. So. Cost of goods sold is virtually zero. Like I said, my first ebook was just a compilation. So it's what's in your brain. There's no printing cost. It's just all virtually based. Uh, my web host gives me 10 terabytes of data. That's the, so in, it's virtually impossible to use up that much data. So whether they download one copy or 10 million copies, my cost is probably still the same. Okay. Whereas a regular book, you know, hard good, it's linear. Price is based on value. You know, when somebody looks at something physical, you know, they get an idea of pretty much how much they'll pay for it, right? The physical item. But for an information-based product, you could generally get away with charging a lot more than you normally could, like anywhere from free to several thousand dollars. Extremely easy to scale. Right? Uh, whether you want to sell one or a million copies, it's just everything stored there, download, which is a normal physical product. You got a production, you might hit various obstacles. Uh, extremely, extremely easy to scale. And for, this, for these reasons, I, I love doing information product. And the fact that also, it generally makes a lot more money than a physical product, because there is no cost of goods sold and everything is so inexpensive to run. So what I want to show you is a, a case study. Uh, this is a product that we created. It's uh, for my friend, Peng Jun. And how it came about was, back in July of last year, Penn was on a month-long trip to California. And the object of this trip to California was to come to California, we'll just arm with his notebook and nothing else, and see how much money he can make. That was basically it. And in the, and in the 30 days that he's been here, that he was here, he made $12,614. <laughs> and that's what, so we created a product out of this to show how it was done. And we called it work from no home because he was away from home and had no home. He was living in hotels and Wi-Fi from Starbucks. So this is the product we created, and this is how easy it is to actually set this up. All right, so this is the inside the members area. So there you see his little welcome video and the actual course and the membership login, where they log in and they can learn how to do it. The site itself is powered by WordPress, which is free, doesn't cost anything. The membership software is called Wishlist Member, and this is what creates that login that you saw that keeps the paying people in and the non-paying people out. <laughs> and that's wishlist, wishlistmember.com. I believe it's $197 for a developer license that allows you to put the software on an unlimited number of sites. So you buy it once, you create an unlimited number of membership sites that you want. No monthly fee. The uh, theme, that you saw in before, it's just a woo theme. Uh, we don't, when, when I make information product, I don't do much custom work. It's basically, I just use a, a pre-made theme, put in a new header, and that's pretty much it. That theme, I believe, was uh, $47. Uh, the videos are hosted by Vimo Pro, Vimo Pro account. Now, I don't put, I put my sales videos on YouTube, but I put my training videos on Vimo Pro. And the reason for that uh, and you could use something like Amazon S3, but I prefer Vimo because it's, it converts all your video to HTML5, so it can work on any device, like on the web, uh, just browser, uh, iPad, Android device, whatever. You can it automatically convert it for you, so there's no need for you to do any conversion yourself. Another reason is Vimo has a, a lots of privacy and security issues that will help you a lot. For example, the videos on Work From No Home can only be viewed on Work From No Home. It cannot be viewed anywhere else. Just should somebody log into the members area, find the video, the URL, and try to embed it somewhere else, it will not embed. Right. And you can also hide the video from the vmo.com itself, make those private so they don't show up. And you could also no index it and no follow it so Google cannot find it. Right. So therefore, the only way you can watch the video is actually go to workfromthehome.com, pay the membership site, and then you can watch it. 
It cannot be embedded. It cannot be searched from anywhere else. So $199 a year, that gives you a quarter million video streams. So if you, don't, if you think that you won't be doing a quarter million videos to your memberships, yeah, that's your cost, $199 a year. My mailing list is powered by Aweber, basically uh, 19 bucks a month. I like Aweber because it's, uh, it's a fantastic game for the spam filter. Really, really good at it. Uh, so, you know, 19 bucks a month, $199 a year, wish list, 200 bucks. You know, for less than 500 bucks, we got this site up and running. That's all it is. Uh, and we, we list our product on ClickBank. All right, ClickBank is the largest clearinghouse of information products. At ClickBank, uh, it's where affiliates go and find products to promote and vendors supply the product. Most users start as a ClickBank affiliate. So they go there and they have, ClickBank has thousands of information products that you can promote and you will make 50 to 80% commission on them. That's how most uh, affiliates start. But the real money is by being a ClickBank vendor and supplying products for the affiliates to promote. <laughs> That's where the real money is. At. See, ClickBank has over 100,000 active affiliates looking for products. So it's like having a sales force of 100,000 people. Now, I know I can sell X amount, X amount myself, but I can get 100,000 people selling it for me. That's a lot easier. So the scale, the leverage is tremendous. So when a ClickBank affiliate goes to ClickBank, what they do is they go to the marketplace, and this is the marketplace here, and the marketplace lists products by category, automotive, uh, weight loss, internet marketing, that kind of stuff. And what they, you gotta figure, the average, how the average ClickBank affiliate work is they're like, they're like Google searchers. Generally, this is, here's a listing here. So this is a, a average ClickBank listing under e-business. So you will see, you will see this is number one here. And when, you, when you're a vendor, you're competing against a lot of products. Like ClickBank has like 12,000 products on there, right? Like here's a, see, this is the, this is a e business uh, listing page one to, ten, one to 10 of 2,377. That's in, just in one category, right? So that's what you're up against. So the key is to get your product to the front page of ClickBank. See, ClickBank users are like Google searchers. Mm -hmm. You know, when you do a search on Google, how often do you go to page two? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you just well, see what's on page one, you click it and you go, right? ClickBank marketers, affiliates the same way. They go to ClickBank, they go to the marketplace, they s go under the niche that they, uh, they specialize in, and they, what's on the front page is that's what they promote. So if you can get your product to the front page of ClickBank, it's money. You cannot help but not sell anything. It's actually impossible. Right? So that's the key. And we do have a system to get to the front page of ClickBank. Right? So I'm going to show you how, how we do it. And oh, so this is, a, this is a, like I said, this is an average ClickBank listing. And it shows you the average, how much you make average per sale. It shows a whole bunch of other stats here. The one stat that all affiliates are interested in is the gravity score. That's one right here. The gravity score is a number of ClickBank affiliates that have made at least one sale of a product. Right, so if you're brand new and you have a product on ClickBank and an affiliate sells one of your product, your gravity score is now one. If another affiliate sells it, gravity score is now two. Another one sells it, gravity score is now three. If one affiliate sells 100 product, gravity score is still one. It's how many individual affiliates made at least one sale in the past eight weeks. Now, affiliates love high gravity score. And the reason they love high gravity score is because it shows that a lot of people are making money. So it's proven. If a gravity score is zero, it means they're the guinea pig. And they're not gonna promote anything with gravity score zero. So what they do is they go to click by marketplace and they search for by gravity and they just promote what's on the front page. Those are all the high gravity product. So how do you drive up gravity? Well, you gotta, like, you gotta have affiliates make a bunch of sales or make at least one sale. So this is how, this is how we do it. We do what's called the product launch, basically. Okay, so we created a, a landing page for our affiliates to join our launch August 3rd, 2012, win prizes, sign up here, got a little video saying why you want to join our launch because me and Penn, we, you know, we're, we've done this for a long time and we're, we're going to make you a lot of money, we got prizes. So that's the landing page. 
The inside of the landing page, we show why. We show a big calendar, August 12th, mark your calendar. Here's your, how do you get your ID? Oh, one of the reasons I love doing ClickBank is because every affiliate has a ClickBank account. Well, virtually, if, if any, any, any affiliate marketer has a ClickBank account. So the, if, if you were to set up your own ClickBank account, or you set up your own affiliate account, do you have to apply for it, get approved, and whereas I say, well, you, my product on ClickBank, just put your ID here, enter it. And the other reason why I like using ClickBank instead of creating your own affiliate uh, system is because as an affiliate, I, I promote a lot of products. And my number one concern when promoting other people's product is, are you going to pay me? That's my number one concern. So I, I don't know you. I don't know you. And, and you have, you're, you're asking me to sign up for your affiliate program, but I don't know who you are. Right? But ClickBank is a multi hundred, I think like quarter million, dollar, quarter million dollar company. I know they will pay me. And ClickBank handles the transaction and the payment to you and the affiliates. Right? So therefore, you remove that resistance level of trying to get affiliates to join. Because every affiliate would know what ClickBank is. So you say, if you say your person ClickBank, if they want to promote, they'll promote it. But if you, have your own, if you set up your own affiliate account, they're going to ask, are you going to pay me? Because you know, we, I've been burned before. You know, I, promote somebody's, I promote somebody's product, made them a lot of money, took off the money. So this is why we use ClickBank. All right. All right. Then we show them our sales funnel. Oh, when it comes to making an information product, you never do one. You always must have a back end additional product to sell. Because you know, if you just sell the front end and then you don't have anything from the back end, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. A lot of money on the table. Right? So we should, and another thing, affiliates want to see the sales funnel as well because they'll be making more money. Right? So we have a front end, an upsell, a downsell, an upsell, a downsell, an upsell, a downsell. Going for the funnel, like, uh, actually, the product, we actually priced the product at $37, not $47, but the average sale was about $55 because of the back, because of the additional upsells and stuff. So we tell them another reason for affiliate promote. We have a proven sales funnel that converts to higher sales. We also create banners for them. All the banners created, the email swipings created. The easier you make it for affiliates to promote, the more chances they'll promote you. And so, so we create all the advertising for them so they don't have to. And lastly, we have a, an affiliate contest. $10,000 in cash prizes to the top 10 affiliates. So 5,000 for first place, 22,000 for second, 15 for third, and so forth down to the top 10 people. So that's the uh, inside the sales page, but how do we actually get the affiliates? Right? There's two ways I actually do that. The first way to get the affiliates is I use a service called JV Notify Pro. And JV Notify Pro is a, is a service that for ClickBank affiliates that tells them what products are launching and if they have a contest going. Because it's nice to make a good commission from a sale, but if you can also win some money and some prizes uh, while you're doing it, all the better. Right? So JV Notify Pro uh, does that. They also have a list of, a list of affiliate, ClickBank affiliates. And so what we did was we purchased a solo mailing from JV Notify Pro to email their affiliate to tell them about our launch on August 3rd. And say, sign up, contest going on, you make 60% commission, uh, great sales funnel going. Well, I also contacted uh, a bunch of JV brokers. And what JV brokers are, uh, they are a, a person who knows a lot of affiliate marketers. Right? So I know a lot of affiliate marketers, and if you want me to promote your stuff, I can actually, if your product's good, I can present your product to my affiliates. Right? So, and what we do is we offer the JV broker a percentage of whatever their affiliate makes. So in this case, we give them 15%. So we went up to JB Broker, who knew a dozen affiliates who can move a lot of traffic. And we said, whatever your affiliates do, we'll give you 50% on top whatever they do. And the nice thing about that is ClickBank can do that. They set it up for you. So automatically, once something gets done, it pays, the, it pays you, it pays the affiliate, it pays the JB Broker. No accounting on your part. But doing, using the JB Broker and JB Novi Pro, we signed up 500 affiliates for the launch on August 3rd. And so what happened is within two days, number one on ClickBank, 430 gravity score. Mm. Now, my product is now exposed to the 100,000 ClickBank marketer, the general population, who only promote stuff on the front page. And I am on the front page. Not only that, 
Sites like, sites like ClickBank Engine, CV Engine, that tracks ClickBank products, I register on their sites. That brings more affiliates. So it's now a feeding frenzy. So the, the net result of this, this is the one week Alexa traffic graph. Basically, we took it out of nowhere to the 5,000 5, biggest site on the internet in one week. That's how much traffic it got. And the net result of all that traffic, first week, 1,483 unit sales at an average price of $55 each. By the time the month was up, we sold 4,000 copies and 500 people on the monthly continuity. So that's uh, basically how I do it. That's my formula, my formula kickback launch. Now I want to leave you with one very hot tip. <laughs> one very hot tip, and that is create the marketing first, then the product. I get emails every day from publishers or authors who, said, who send me the manuscript and say, yeah, I wrote this thing, I spent the last year on it, I put my life into it, it's really, really great product, I just need a way to sell it. Oh yeah, that's all you need now. I'm, I'm, right now I'm creating my fourth product. And right now we're just doing the marketing for it. The product hasn't even been created. Uh, my current product that's on ClickBank is still being created. Because it's a membership site. We're just creating as we go along. But we do the marketing first, we do the sales page first, we do the affiliate joint venture page first, we get that all set up first, we get the, sa we get the sales page done, and then we create a product based on the sales page. So, you know, your sales page is going to list all your points, like this, you're going to do this, 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 and this, so you make sure that's in your product, and this way you won't be sued for false advertising. <laughs> right? So, uh, yeah, like I said, this is basically the Cliff Notes version of how I launched my products. I only got 30 minutes, but I said, I am speaking again on June 8th in Long Beach. June 8th in Long Beach at the uh, Hilton Long Beach, and I got two hours. So if you like what you saw today and you want to know more, right, uh, just come see me afterward, and uh, you can come as my guest to the event in Long Beach. All right, so uh, I, got, I got your ticket cover. So, and if you want to get in contact with me, uh, these, these are my contact information. That's my web, that's my email. Um, I like me on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and uh, my, no, don't call me. <laughs> okay, so, perfect, 30 minutes, right? All right, thank you very much.